Hey, what's up YouTube? Today I got a mod to show you for the Voron 2.4. I'm gonna put it on my 350. This is called the Clicky Clack Door Mod, the Fridge Door Mod. This was designed by Whopping Pokard. This was put together by LDO. It's a great kit. It has everything you need in it except for the printed parts for the build. Okay, so we're gonna open this up, show you what all's included, how to assemble it, all that, and we're gonna put it on one of my machines. So let's get the parts printed all out and get them on the table and let's get to it. Let's get this thing opened up and see what we got included here. We've got some foam tape here. Go around the sides. This is a seal, I'll show you guys how to put this in. There's kind of a special way to do this. We've got a box of hardware and all of our extrusions. So this kit does come in different sizes and different colors. So you could get different color extrusions or if your machine is a different size, you can get different sizes. Also it comes with or without the panels. So if you need a panel, you can get one in the kit or if you want to do a custom panel, you can do a custom one. So we have two different sizes of extrusions here. We have our seal, we have our foam tape, and we've got our box of hardware here. So inside this hardware box, we've got multiple sizes of screws. We got one whole heat insert. More screws here. We're gonna go over all these in a moment. We got four dowel pins in five by 45. Split bushings. Set of magnets. Roll in T-nuts. And another machine screw. So let's get the parts printed over here. We'll get them up on the table, get the panel up here, and we'll show you guys how to get this thing assembled. The first thing we're gonna need for this is the M5x16s. So you have two small extrusions and two large ones. This has my logo on the front, so I want this to be the top right side, so I just need to be aware of that. So what we're gonna do is put the three pieces of frame together, and then we'll slide this in, in the grooves of the side of the extrusions, and then we'll put the top part on, and then bolt it together. Then you have your frame with your door. These are the two long ones, and these are the two short ones. So you want to tighten these right here in where there's just a little bit sticking out. Then you'll slide this extrusion right into place here. Then you're going to tighten through this hole. If you've ever dealt with any of these blind joints, then you'll know exactly how to do this. But just going to cover it just to be sure. You can put it on something flat like this and make sure it doesn't stick up too far here and it's kind of all flush is the best possible way you can get this together. So we have our three pieces together here. I'm going to have to go ahead and take this off. to take this panel here and slide it in these grooves in the side. Now we can put the top on, lock it in place. Now we've got our frame here, everything looks good, it's nice and solid. Now to install this weather stripping, I'm going to flip this around because the weather stripping needs to be on the outside of the door. So this is going to be the outside of the door for me. So the weather stripping is going to go down through here. And since it's going in the corners, you don't want just a flush cut like this. You're going to want a, an angle on this cut. I'll show you how to do that. So the way this weather stripping goes in, you can see here how it's kind of made. It's got a little 
little kind of, it's got a little groove here. That groove is going to be setting up against the extrusion. So this is how it's going to go in. This is the outside of the door. This is the weather stripping. It's going to go just like this and go down through the way. So I'm going to place this on my little mat here and I'm going to cut it at a 45 degree angle. Here's my 45. Get it the best I can get it there. So I'm going to put a mark right here on where I want this next cut to be. Now we can come back over here and slide this on. And we're going to do the same things for each area of this seal. If you end up cutting it just a hair short, you can stretch it out just a little bit or start at one end and then leave it in the middle, then go down to the other end and get it where you want it, and then continue from there. Now there we have it. We got our seals all in. We got our corner joints done nice and smooth. Very nice looking door. So we got these two parts here. These are called the solid hinges, and you can tell the difference between these because one of them has a star and one of them has just a circle there. So we're gonna take each of these with a star, and we're gonna knock this pin in until it's got about 20 centimeters sticking up. I don't think it matters which direction you go. It may be easier if you use the rounded pin in first. Just knock it in there. Right there. All right, from here we can get our bushings. I'm gonna grab four of these bushings. And we're gonna slide two each onto these. Now we're going to take our other hinges and we're going to take these and tap them in just like this. And there we are. Do the same thing to this side. From here we're going to install the magnets everywhere they go and press them in. I like to add a dab of super glue anytime I put these in. Just to make sure they hold a little better. Best super glue you can get here, go to Magnet Baron, also for the really good magnet. I'm gonna close like this. So make sure when you put these magnets in that you put the polarity correct on each side. Otherwise, it's gonna be pushing against each other. You can use multiple ways to get these magnets pressed in. I like to use old Lemery 3D's famous magnet pressing tool. Get you some tape, put it on the bottom side, hold it up underneath there so it don't tear anything up and then put your magnet right here on the top of this and then just kind of press it right in. Works great until you get situations like this that you really can't do it because there's angles there and stuff. So put a little dab of super glue in each one of these. Let that dry a minute for your super glue, and then you'll be able to check and make sure your magnets work good. We've got a couple other magnets to go in here. One here, here, and on each, each side of these. So we have to make sure the polarity is correct on these. I would just put those in one at a time just to make sure you get those right. If you stick the other magnets on this, it kind of helps you when you go through to put your magnets in to make sure you don't put them on the wrong polarity. There we go. We've got all of our magnets in. Let's go ahead and get our one heat insert pressed in as well. It's going to go right here in the center. It's your soldering iron. I'm sure you know how to put in heat inserts. I won't have to go over that part with you. Make sure you get it in even is the main thing when putting in heat inserts. Let me go ahead and get our M3 by eight and put this clip right here. Screw that in with your M3 by eight millimeter. 
Since we got these done, now we can put our dowel pins and our bushings in our hinge here. So it's kind of the same process as we did on the other ones. I'm going to go ahead and knock this in, and then I'll knock the top part in with the bushing. That way I can flip it over this way and go ahead and knock this side in. Otherwise, you can just knock this in and then put it on the edge of a table with this part hanging off the table and then do the other side. Either way, work. Also, one of the things I want to mention is something I almost missed with this is you need to make sure you put an M3 by 8 right here. There's a little hole for it. Thread it all the way in. Do that to both sides. Now, when this goes on, there's a channel right here that it's going to slide in between and it keeps that from opening and closing all the way. There it's in there, slide that on, and we're going to push this in place. So now we'll flip it over, knock this side in. This will be much easier than your other ones, by the way. Put the bushing on. Try to hold it level as you can when you start tapping it so it doesn't go in crooked, by the way. Now that we have our hinges done, our handles done, and everything is put together, we can bring the printer up here, show you how it goes on, and put the door on. So the way this is going to mount onto the machine, it's going to go to the sides here. So we're going to need some T-nuts in the sides. This will go to the very top on this hinge, and it will go in like this with these two. And then this, will, this other one here will mount to your, your printer. So we'll put the four in here, two right here and two at the bottom, and show you how to do the other side as well. We'll slide those in real quick now. You're going to need the T-nuts. These are roll in, but they can slide in just as, just as easy. And when you flip this over to put these roll in T-nuts in, they need to be in this orientation right here. I like to put something small and just kind of lock them in place. Slide them where you need them to be. And then you can put this and kind of line it up with the holes to get it where you need it to be. So if you slide that in there, you can put something inside and you've got your, you've got your holes right there ready to go. So now we need some M3 by 8. Put them right here. Don't tighten it all the way up. Just get it a little bit snug. Enough where you can still slide it around like this. So slide it up to the very edge. And then tighten it. We're going to do the same thing down here. So the bottom side would be just a little bit different. You don't want to slide it down to the edge here, like that, obviously. Uh, but you want this part to be flush right here. So let's put our T-nuts in here. Those will need to go this orientation like this. Get something to stick it in there in your hole just to make sure you're in the right spot. Put our M3x8s in. And then we're going to slide this down until it touches right here. You can do this by standing it up as well and just sliding it down until it won't go no farther. Then tighten it up. So now we got our hinges on over here. We need to put our latch on. And looking at this from the front view, we're going to turn it up this way. And kind of the same thing we did a minute ago, we're going to put this on the side here. So looking at this. It's got a couple grooves in it. It's going to go just like this. So we need four T-nuts in here. And just so they look better, make sure you put them in the same orientation I'm going to show you. That way you don't have one sticking out over here. So you're going to want two like this. And then two the other way. Lock them all in. Now, I like to take this, and you can kind of see where the holes are at right there, and move these around until you get them pretty close to where you need them to be. 
right where you need to be. That way, when you flip this over, it kind of lines everything up. And this one, we're going to use the M3 by 20s. So tighten these up, but leave them enough room where you can slide it around still a little bit. We're going to adjust that before we put it completely on. Like that. Okay, now we have this to put on the machine. We'll bring the machine up here in a moment, but we just got one thing left to do, and that's put the foam on. So when putting on this foam, I like to also put it on at an angle. You don't really have to do this. It helps get a better seal in there. If you want to use something like this, you can to get your angles, but you don't have to. You kind of hold your finger in between both of these. It'll help you get it more centered. We'll leave a little bit stuck on at the end so when you do your cut right here it doesn't stick okay so now we can put the door on i wish i could have got the blue for this i may end up changing that later but for the video purposes it'll be fine one thing i will have to do is i'm going to have to move these down a little bit because they're going to be in the way as you can see let's go ahead and do that real quick so i'm noticing when putting these in it's going to be best to slide it up a little bit because down here where you have your blind joint this wants to keep sliding and these need to go in this special orientation. So maybe slide it up a little bit, get them tight, and then slide them back down. So let's see where they need to be. So don't tighten all these all the way down yet. Just barely tighten them a little bit. So now we need to mount our latch on here. Just need to put two M3 T-nuts in there. Put them at this same orientation, like this, and line them up. I've got mine in here already, right about where they need to be. Pop that on, and then use your two M3 by eights. Don't tighten it all the way. Now this is a time where we want to measure where we want this to be at because we will adjust this from your hinge here to see where we want it to be. So we want it in the center. So you can measure down from the very top or down from the bottom part of your extrusion or wherever you want to measure from to get your center point and just go from there. Once you got it measured up, tighten it up. Get it where you think it's in the, the very center. Now we can adjust this one. So you want to loosen it until you get it right in the middle. Now we can tighten this one up. Now I just need to clean the rest of these dirty panels that's on here. <laughs> All right, so I just absolutely love this door. I just love this mod. It does a great job. It seals up the heat in there a lot better. So the other doors kind of just came together like this and there's a crack in the middle and it just wasn't mounted to the extrusion and sealed up as tight. So it had a lot of opportunities for air to escape. So the heat will stay in this a lot better. It does help the chamber temperature and it looks just absolutely amazing. So I'm 100% happy with this thing. So if you just follow everything in the video, there's a few tips I, I recommended in there that you might want to do when you're gluing things in. You make sure you use a glue and some other things like that. But just follow the video and you'll be just fine. I just want to say thank you to Daniel at West3D. Thank you, Polymaker. Thank you, Happy, for the panels. They look awesome. You do such a good job on those. I have multiple more that I need to put on my other printers because I'm going to do this mod on several other machines. So. Make sure you guys like and subscribe for me. It would help me out just a little bit. And I will see you all on the next video.